Hey everybody, this is Captain Kyle. I'm here at Thy Geekdom Con 2019 with Kyle McCarley, voice actor in video games and anime. And how are you enjoying the con? I'm doing great. How about you, Kyle? So far, Kyle. Now, I understand you started acting rather young, like four years old. What were some of your early roles that you had? I got into acting at a very young... All I ever wanted to do was be an actor. Um... My the first role that my mother remembers was the candy cane kid in my third grade Christmas program. Uh, but I did I I did musical theater and and theater and like community theater, show choir, um, yeah, all kinds of different stuff all through um, grade school, middle school, high school. Moved from the small town I grew up in in Kansas out to Los Angeles and and studied theater and. And uh, at, at USC, and yeah, so that, that, that's my background. You had quite a journey. Now, as you were getting a little older, and you always wanted to be an actor, were there any particular actors or voice actors that you kind of idolized or emulated? When I was little, I really, well, not little, little. When I was in high school, I had people telling me I looked like Johnny Depp, which I think was a lie, but, you know, they were, they were being nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, so I, I, I looked up to him a lot. I thought he was a really good actor. That was around the time of, uh, let's see, like Finding Neverland came out around then, which I think is one of his best performances. Um, in terms of voice actors that I look up to, there are there's a long list. Uh, Jim Cummings, Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, Billy West, Frank Welker. Gosh, there's there's so many. Uh, one of my favorites, who's, who's actually a friend of mine now, is Ben Diskin, who's also in the anime and, and JRPG video game scene. Shout out to Ben Diskin. Awesome. Let's talk about fandom a little bit. I understand growing up, you were a Gundam Wing enthusiast, super fan. When I was in middle school, uh, Gundam Wing was, wasn't part of the after school Toonami block. My friends and I got so into Gundam Wing that we all picked characters that were like our characters, all of them Gundam pilots. Mine was Catra Roberba Winner. And I went to school in cosplay before that was a word as Catra, just on a regular day at school. How was that received? Not well, not well. Uh, we, we were the, I mean, everybody's a little bit of a social pariah in middle school, but we were probably the bottom rung. Um, and now geekdom is in chic. It's in, in vogue, so that's pretty great. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a dream come true being able to, to play Mikazuki Agus in Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans because of the fact that I grew up. I mean, that was my favorite anime, Gundam Wing. And, and then I got to be a Gundam pilot. How cool is that? That is totally cool. I understand that you wrote and did a lot of the voices in a fan radio play based on World of Warcraft. You wrote this. Have you had an opportunity to write anything um, in your professional life? For those watching who aren't familiar, uh, I kind of springboarded into the voiceover side of things while I was going to school studying acting, the serious acting. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I got into World of Warcraft and I, and I started a fan radio play that uh, where, yeah, where I co-wrote, co-directed, played 12 different characters or something in, in, in that. That's what kind of spurred my interest in, in voice acting. Um, but in the, in the professional sense, yes, I have started a script adaptation for anime. I wrote a little over half of the episodes for a series called Gundam Build Divers, uh, which is on YouTube now, or at least some of it is. Um, I'm now writing... Uh, Rising of the Shield Hero on Crunchyroll. I started with episode 16. Um, and script adaptation is really cool because I always felt like my strong suit with writing was dialogue, the story formulation stuff. Uh, like I can, I can help develop characters and I can write solid dialogue that sounds very conversational, but developing the story was never my strong suit. And with script adaptation, the story's already there. I just have to figure out how these characters fit words in their mouths within that story. Dialogue can be make or break a production. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Case in point, the Star Wars prequels. Anyway. <laughs> we don't talk about those. Right. Now, you're also 9S in year. Um, do you still play it? I have not picked up near in a little while. Um, it's a There are five different main endings uh, to the game. So you play through the story once. You play through it again. Then you get a continuation that gives you a different ending. And then there's a, another ending to that. Uh, so... Um, I, I played through all of that. I got I'm probably 96% completion or something. Um, and then I, I switched gears and went back and played the original Nier for a little while. I just got through to the first ending of that, and then I switch, and then uh, Fire Emblem Echoes came out. So I, I started playing that. All of that was on my Twitch stream. So what games, when you do have the time, are you concentrating on now? I, I'm a pretty casual gamer now. I, I like the stuff that I can pick up and then put down 20 minutes later or something without having to keep track of a big, involved storyline and stuff. So I play a lot of multiplayer, quick round things like uh, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is my jam right now. Uh, for It's on Xbox. I'm a PC gamer, first and foremost. So I love playing pretend as a pirate. That's a lot of fun. And uh, Overwatch, always a staple. Rocket League, games like that are, are kind of what I revolve around. Now, getting back to Nier, I heard that you said you kind of killed your voice. It was very tough on your voice um, playing that character. Nier was kind of a special case, play, playing 9S, uh, because of the fact that, I, like, in a lot of video games, there's a lot of what we call battle call-outs, where you're, you're shouting as you launch an attack, or you get punched, or get shot, or, or whatever. Because that's, that's just a, an inherent element in a lot of video games. But you kind of learn uh, the technical approach to how to make those sound real without completely thrashing your vocal cords. Near was very different because of the fact that 9S gets so emotional. Uh, there's, there's some primal rage that comes through in the later parts of the game, and there just wasn't a way to fake that. I, I, had, to, I had to really go there, and, and um, yeah, I did, I did throw out my vocal cords for about, for about three days at one point. Uh, thankfully, the session was on a Thursday, and I had nothing booked that Friday, so... It wasn't a big deal to, to recover from that. In terms of other stuff that has really beaten me down vocally, there, there, isn't, there isn't a whole lot. I try to take care of myself while I'm working. I did once early in my career. I, I, I've done a lot of audiobooks. Early in my career, I, I learned the lesson of never use a character voice that you can't sustain for four hours at a time because there was a character in the first installment of a book series that was, he was barely in it at all. And he was like this vampire general dude. So I did like a Dr. Claw impression from the old school uh, Inspector Gadget cartoon, which Frank Welker, I don't know how in the world he can sustain that. Cause it's down here. Yeah. Uh, so I did that for, you know, it was like four or five sentences total throughout an entire book. And then in book number two, he comes back and he's there all the way through. And that was brutal. <laughs> Let's ask a couple of fun questions. Like, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? My favorite ice cream flavor has got to be from Dryer's which you can get in the grocery store, but it's a special edition thing that's only out seasonally, and I don't even know what the season is. Peanut butter cookie dough. So good. It's peanut butter flavored ice cream with a peanut butter ribbon and little chunks of peanut butter cookie dough in it. I will definitely keep an eye out for it. Um, have you done a lot of cons, and have you had a really standout, memorable experience with a fan? I think I average around five or six convention appearances a year. I do remember I got a, a really touching note from a fan at one convention that I had to take home. I, I didn't have time to read it right then and there because it was like two pages long or something. But it was a handwritten note about how much uh, Nier Automata and, and my performance as 9S had, had really helped him through a tough time in his life. And like he, he said he was on the, on the verge of suicide and, and somehow that game 
just really made him con and and it makes sense because it's it's a game that's that's about like what it means to be human and there are moments like that that I'm just like wow I it, I mean we go into it we're not curing cancer you know we're we go into a, a four by four cell padded room all by ourselves secluded from everybody but the director and the engineer and maybe a client we play pretend for two to four hours at a time and we don't think about just just how much some of the stuff we do can can mean to to people and that's what makes coming to these conventions and meeting the fans so special great to hear that your work has an effect beyond what just entertainment it it really it really is it it, it gives yeah it, it 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 gives us a sense of purpose in life kind of are there any projects that you have coming out that you can actually talk about yes uh, there's an anime called Mr. Osamatsu. Some of the more hardcore anime fans will probably know as Osamatsu-san, because that was the Japanese title. We have been working on recording an English dub of that for the better part of a year at this point, I think. It's, it's been a very slow-moving process, but it is coming. Uh, I don't know when, but it's really, really funny. Um, Patrick Seitz wrote and directed the first few episodes. He's still on as a, as a writer for a few episodes here and there, and now Chris Bevins is writing and directing the rest of them. It's just very, very funny. Lots of poking fun at pop culture tropes and, and things. Very funny show. So I look forward to that one. All right, awesome. We'll keep an eye out for it, and we'll put your social media so people can uh, keep track of what you're doing and other projects as you are able to talk about them. Anything you'd like to say to your fans before we finish up? Stay awesome, guys, and, and please support the official releases. Uh, we, we really do appreciate everything you guys do to, to keep us employed and, uh, and, and letting us know um, the, the stuff that connects with you, the stuff that, that, that means a lot to you, because that... That really affects us, too. Every time one of you guys comes up to us and, and gives us those compliments and, and lets us know what connected with you and, and how much it meant to you, that means a lot to us. So thank you. Thank you all. And thank you so much, Kyle. Yeah. And everyone, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Have fun and follow your fandom. This is Goku. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah!